Going on. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the August meeting of the Human Relations Commission. Let's begin with roll call. Commissioner Bacchetti. Commissioner Chen. Here. Commissioner Marin. Commissioner Onan. Here. Commissioner Savage. Commissioner Stone. Here. Commissioner Alassani. Here. All right. Um, so next item is, do we have any agenda changes, requests, or deletions? So just to let our audience know and potential speakers, we're going to have a um, presentation from Consuela Hernandez on the new micro assistance program, and then, then we will get into the HISRAP stuff, so you'll need to be patient while we go through our first agenda item. Okay, anything else? All right. Now we next had, um, I think, three sets of minutes that Mary had forwarded to all of us. Does anyone have any changes or corrections to these minutes that they haven't sent to Mary yet? Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make the motion. And second. All right. All in favor for approving these minutes? You need to do each set. Oh, to do each set? Yeah. Oh, I was trying to batch process these, but <laughs> that's not going to happen. Okay. So this, let me just see here. So which ones are for which? Okay. So there's the March. Okay, let's do the March ones. All right, is there a motion to approve the March minutes? Yes, I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, all in favor of approving the March minutes say aye. 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 All opposed or abstain? All right, the March minutes are approved. All right, next we have the April minutes. A motion to approve? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? All right, then the April ones are approved. And lastly, the June minutes. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Oh, Greer, Greer, you're on fire. I know, right? Okay. I second. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Teresa got in there. Um, Teresa, three. I didn't hear you. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Abs abstain or oppose? All right, then all three sets are now officially approved. Thank you, Mary. Okay. And now on to our business for the evening. So we begin with an update on the new micro assistance program from city staff, and that would be the wonderful Consuelo Hernandez. Thank you, Chair. Great, thank you. Good now evening, Chair and members of the Human Relations Commission. Tonight, I just wanted to provide you with a quick update on the micro enterprise assistance program. As you recall, earlier this year, you gave us authorization to approve um, an additional $150,000 towards a second year of funding for the MAP program. When we went to the Finance Committee, they had and expressed some of the same concerns and questions that you did um, in February or earlier this year. And when we took it to Council, they asked us for additional information. And tonight, um, what I left for you at Places is a report that we'll be taking to the Finance Committee next week. And really, it was just to formalize the report. We wanted to bring it to you earlier, but with your break and us promising to take it to council in August, we didn't get that opportunity to get your feedback on whether you had any additional questions. But there's still time um, to provide any feedback that you have. And if you turn to page two of the report, you'll see that it's the same table that we showed you earlier this year with the grants that we issued um, in March and April. We're still working on getting all of their agreements settled and working on the logistics of their business, but the program is moving forward. And we've also met with our community partners and identified some new structural things that we can add to the program to make it more effective. And we're hoping that if the city council uh, votes to continue with the program at the amount that we're requesting, that we can help 25 people or identify 25 people through this program that will then go through through the process. And if you look at page three of the report, we've just bullet in, in a bullet list some of the items that we look we're looking to improve for next year. And really that's all that I have for you tonight, unless you have any specific questions. Um, I'll be coming back to you next month with an update on the entire program for fiscal year 14. And, and at that time I'll have more update on what the status is of this program and the six grantees that we funded during the year. And that's my staff report. <laughs> Um, so, Consuelo, you, you might have to talk us through the numbers a little bit here. So, this for this first uh, pilot year, you had six grantees. So, how are you going to ramp up to twenty, potentially twenty-five? Sure. So, we're averaging a grant amount about sixty-eight hundred per grantee. And if you turn to the 
fourth page, um, one of the things that we came across is that we had to provide uh, general liability insurance for each of our grantees, and that delayed the execution of the agreements for about a month and a half. And so we're adding that cost in there as well, and then leaving $170,000 for direct grants at an average of about $6,800 $6, per grantee. And is, is how much of this money is coming from CDBG funds? All of it is coming from okay. CDBG. Mm -hmm. We've determined that. How many years? <laughs> Sorry, it's just for, for one year. For just for one year? Yes. And I noticed too that um, in the first round, the amounts varied really widely. Mm -hmm. So is that just the nature of the different businesses that were proposed? and? Or are you going to maybe standardize on some range, ranges or limits for people? You know, we, we considered that. We had some people that wanted grants for under $1,000. And based on the amount of work that we have to prepare and looking at the fact that the insurance requirement is averaging about five to $600 per grantee, it's just not worth the level of work that we have to do. Um, and one of the benefits of having this range is that it really gives us the opportunity to better um, evaluate the program and what the effectiveness of the dollars are. And so it just turned out that way. So by looking at the table on the page three, it says direct grant, you know, that's 100,000, the third line. And the amount expanded right now, committed, is mm -hmm. 38,200. And then there's balance. So the balance, are you looking for more grantees? For yes, so what we're going to do is if you turn to the page, um, to page four, that includes the 83,000 plus the 150 that you allocated for fiscal year 15. So whatever the balance was for 14, uh -huh. we're grouping it in together to um, run the second year of the program. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to give you this report um, earlier, but it just came out last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot off the presses. Yes. So this report's going to finance and then on to city council? So the way that we've written or crafted the recommendation is that the finance committee can in fact give us the authorization to continue with the program as we've presented it here, or they can make a recommendation for us to take it to the full council. So are there any other questions or comments for Consuelo on the new micro so The first year, the grantee, it was six grantees, right? It's yes. just like a pilot. Correct. You know, and then there's some more because they are left over for the next period, more Correct. than the six first year, so there will be more grantees, hopefully. Yes, and, and when you look at how you can really evaluate a program, essentially this second year is also going to serve as a pilot because we're taking a new approach. Um, we're introducing more structure to the program, and they will also serve to help us um, determine the effectiveness of the program. And ultimately, we want to turn it over to the community and not have staff administer it. So Consuelo, um, where are the six grantees now? Have they started their businesses already? A few of them have. A few are waiting because the funding is actually seed grants, and so they can't get off um, with their running with their business until they get the funds. So um, hopefully next month when I come back to you, I'll actually have a better update for you. We're hoping to issue three reimbursement requests next week. So that's really big. <laughs> the the report says um, assumes a minimum of twenty five grantees. Um, but you're not bound to that number, right? Could We're be, not. Okay. No. So it could be less than. It can be, be less. It can be more. Okay. That's our goal <laughs> to identify 25 eligible people. Do you know, too, Consuelo, are there any residents in the Buena Vista Mobile Home Park <coughs> who are, are applicants? Or can you, are you allowed to say? Um, I believe I'm allowed to say, uh, Minka. <laughs> well, the answer is no. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So that's one of the one of the very first items on that bullet list is our outreach efforts. So in the pilot phase, we really concentrated on our partnership with Downtown Streets team and Palo Alto Housing Corp. For this coming year, we're going to expand that outreach and make it more citywide. Look to other um, nonprofit agencies in the city, and so we're hoping to get a different, a, a more variety of applicants. Okay, and also looking to those that didn't get funded the first year. All right. Is there anything else for Consuelo? All right, if not, thank you so thank much. Thank you. I'll see you next month. Yes, we're very, <laughs> very excited to hear more about the program. All right. 
And now we're going to move into our next item of business, which is um, we're going to discuss the report from the HISRAP subcommittee. Right. Right. Um, regarding the allocation of the incremental amount awarded by City Council for fiscal year 2015. Uh, before we get into that discussion, we'll take comments from the public. So if anyone would like to speak, they need to fill out a car speaker card and hand it to staff. So I'll start with the folks who had already turned in their cards. And the first one was Hyrie. Um, we should use the staff report, give a report first, and then they can ask questions and report to the public. Oh, I thought that they spoke first. No. Okay, I'm sorry, I messed up. I'm being being reprimanded. No, I'm not getting it. Anyway. Okay. Um, um, you, you know, go first, he's a okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so, me, so me, I'm sorry, to get me back on track. So what, what are we going to... We're gonna just going to um, um, just give an introduction. Okay. And then they can ask questions of clarification. Then we'll go out to the public, and then you can have your time of discussion. That's... Okay. Okay. All right. So you can go through the report. Okay. All right, so this year, as you know, something very unprecedented happened, which was that the City Council awarded us 100000 extra dollars in the second year of a HISRAP cycle. Amazing. Um, so some of that money what is to be distributed pro rata uh, as a cost of living increase, and so all the agencies will get some increase. But there was a remaining about $68,000 that the City Council asked the Human Relations Commission to recommend funding allocations for. We formed a subcommittee that addressed that and came up with recommendations that we're now bringing to, I would like to say the full HRC, but we're sort of an abbreviated version of the full HRC tonight. But at any rate, we are a quorum. And so that's what we're going, going to talk about. Our application process was basically a streamlined request for repos, proposal. Um, because this money is not renewable at this time, we needed to evaluate the request in terms of who could do what within the fiscal year and not depend on this money going forward into the future because we're not sure if council will include it in next year's HISRAP budget cycle. And the amount was actually fairly small to try to distribute um, across the agencies who applied. And I believe there were 10, yes. 10 applications. So we um, evaluated all of the applications and they were all very interesting and very worthy. Um, I don't know, do we want to go into the details of what we are proposing or? I would. Go through the whole thing? You, yeah, go okay. through the process and then um, just go through the, each of the allocations. Okay, so we, we went through that, um, that process of reviewing those 10 applications. I'm sorry. Okay, so this one is the, I'm seeing people on here who are not part of our. At Bastrix ones. Oh, okay, gotcha, okay. So, um, wait, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. ACS. These, these ones did not get funding, but. Okay, but the, there are people on here who didn't request funding, so I'm not, I'm now a little confused. The ones with the Bastrix. The ones with the asterisks are the agencies no, that didn't did request. not request. submit an application. Oh, okay. So just in that one um, beige column are the ones that did submit an application and the allocation recommendations from the subcommittee. Okay. All right, sorry. Bear with me here. Lots of paperwork to do. All right, so let's start with Adolescent Counseling Services. Um, they are a longtime HISRAP grantee, and they had... Um, requested money to fund um, internships and a staff position. Um, you know, I'm sorry again, Mink, I don't see what the amount that they requested. That is not on there. Oh, okay, all right. Um, so. Right, you might be easier to go off of. Okay. But this, that might be easier. Okay. So, um, and, and they are serving about 15% more students um, in, this, in the Palo Alto Unified School District. So we decided to give them an award to fund one of the internships, which is how we came up with the amount that we awarded for them. Um, Community Technology Alliance is the organization that's running um, Tech uh, SCC, which is the HIMSS compliant software required by the federal government in order for Santa Clara County to receive HUD funding. And Palo Alto's share of that um, in IT infrastructure upgrade is $2,162. We decided that because that would enable the whole county to receive potentially millions of dollars in HUD funding, that that would be a good investment to make, so we gave them a grant to do that. Um, Dreamcatchers is a new agency uh, that's helping middle school students close the achievement gap here in Palo Alto, which is a, a big concern for all of us. 
them, they requested uh, money for several different programs. Uh, the amount was too large for this small incremental funding allocation, but we did decide to fund one of their programs for $4,400, um, which will be helping to teach teens about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And that's an important focus area for these middle schoolers. Uh, next, we have Envision Shelter Network, well represented here today. Um, Envision has been struggling um, with a number of their programs, but particularly their food-based programs. Um, they requested 20000 to help fund the Breaking Bread program, which was formerly seven days a week, and I believe has been cut back to five. The HRC did not want the program to be cut back further, and so we granted $20,000 to help shore up that program for the fiscal year 2015. Um, Mayview Community Center is another longtime grantee. Um, they requested money to purchase um, an asset, which was um, two medical equipment um, monitors and displays. If you've ever toured Mayview's clinic, you can see that it's rather run down, and um, we felt like they really did need the infrastructure upgrade um, at their clinic. The other um, thing that is appealing about that type of purchase is that if this money isn't renewed for next time, they will have an asset that is free and clear and that belongs to the community going forward. So we decided to fund that purchase. Uh, Momentum for Mental Health also requested that we um, contribute to fund their field outreach specialist who's here tonight. We all very much support Hyrie's work and so we um, awarded 5648 for that. Uh, Palo Alto Housing Corp came to us with a very innovative program to help also somewhat food-based to help low-income seniors get to the La Comida subsidized lunch program by leasing a van from a third agency, which is Avenidas. So we like that collaboration, and um, we decided to fund that pilot program, which is $8,268. Um, SALA is another program that we're very supportive of. SALA is unusual in that they cannot charge for their fees by, um, it's a legal requirement with the county, and they have a backlog of elders who are at risk of being abused, both physically, financially, and in other ways. So by funding them, we felt that they would be able to see more clients and help prevent that abuse, and we went ahead and granted them $4,500. VISTA is another new agency, um, not to the community, because they've been here since the 1930s, uh, but to HISRAP. And they had requested money to um, increase um, the number of seniors that they could help live independently who are suffering from visual impairment. So we were not able to fund them fully, but we did grant them 50, or we're recommending $5,500 to help them serve seniors so that they can stay in their homes longer and, and, and be independent. And then finally, Youth Community Services, another very venerable Palo Alto program, wanted to switch their staffing model to something that would be more cost effective, and they needed um, a grant to do that. So we are funding half of that um, request so that they can um, pay for a part-time staff position to do youth programming more effectively for them, and that was 3568 So with this recommended spread, we are hoping that every agency will get a significant enough amount of money that they can do something meaningful in terms of either continuing a program or starting a program, and that then when we get results from them later on in the fiscal year, we can go back to council and show them what their money did in the hopes that they will then include that money in subsequent HISREP funding cycles. Um, I think sometimes it's difficult to quantify, you know, how human services are delivered and what kind of outcomes they have, but we're very confident that our agencies will work with us to get those metrics and get them to council and help people see what it, all the good things that we're able to do even with these small grants. So that was the thinking behind the subcommittee's decision making, um, and that's where we are tonight. So I see, um, some of the agencies are represented here, and I know my fellow commissioners may have questions. So just to let you know, uh, serving on that commission was myself, Commissioner Al-Hassani, and Commissioner Morin, who is not with us tonight. So are there any comments or questions from fellow commissioners? Commissioner Stone? Yes, thank you. Uh, so what was the process in determining, in determining how much money went, and did you look at was how much the agency requested a major factor in determining who got what and what share? Because there's a clearly a large discrepancy between Envision and some of the other services. So how do you make those decisions? Um, well, I'll answer, and, I'll, and, if, and if Commissioner al Hassani wants to jump in, he can also give his take on it. Um, the, pro the agencies are very disparate here in Palo Alto. You know, some are smaller agencies that serve a particular set of people, and some are larger agencies. Um, and the needs are also kind of on different 
areas of what you might call Maslow's, you know, sliding scale of needs. But um, in our view, hunger and nutrition were very key priorities for the community. Uh, community is affluent, having people like low-income seniors and homeless and chronically sick people going hungry is just a very disturbing image for us. So we did want to put some priority on the food-based program, so that was one of our thoughts. Um, we also wanted, um, because the money may not be renewable, we wanted programs and projects that could be completed, done, and do some good for the community, and if no more money comes in, well, at least we got that chunk of need addressed. So we did put some thoughts around that. So for in other words, if an agency requested a large grant to fund a staff position and then had no plan for how they would fund it next time, that wasn't really, you know, within the guidelines for this incremental allocation that we got from council. So I mean, all of the requests are very worthy, but we had to deal with the realities of how much money we had and the fact that it's really a one-time allocation, at least for right now, and operating on those assumptions and constraints, this is kind of what we came up with. So, did you have some additional thoughts, Mitty? Uh, no, I think, I think you hit most of the points. Um, I would just add that uh, sort of in the application, sort of the more detailed uh, and specific the, uh, the applications were in terms of how they were going to spend that money and how they were going to, um, as the Chair said, fund that new program or new initiative uh, uh, after this year um, made our jobs easier, uh, essentially. So it's both, both ways related. How, what, ki what type of work they're doing with this money? And how could they achieve with that amount of money? Yes, um, and some of the agencies are doing good work and would want to do more of it, basically. Like Sala wants to see more clients because they have a backlog. Well, that, that makes sense. And ACS is seeing more kids than ever before. So that, that's good work. We want them to continue. Um, at the same time, we had some really new and innovative ideas that were creative and that we really wanted to see so what the agencies could do, you know, in terms of collaborating with each other or reaching a new demographic here in the city. So this also partially merit depending, you know? Well, I think all of it's merit, but some of the proposals are sort of for, I would say, newer or emerging needs that maybe mm -hmm. haven't been funded in this way before. And some are for existing agency programs, but we want them to continue and not be cut back. Or we want them to be able to serve yet more people. Stone. So going into the weeds a, a little more, something on adolescent counseling services, mm -hmm. they were asked they want to fund an additional counsel, counselor intern, at, it just says one of the Palo Alto high schools, was it a specific request for, for just needing one at one high school or, like I, I'm asking basically if we had $6,000 going towards them, does that mean we have a new counseling counseling intern at both high schools to be able to to help or not, or do you yeah, not know? They, they did actually request two, and a staff person who would oversee them. But then that grant would have been quite large. So those are the those are the difficult trade-offs that we had to make as a commission. You know, we fund all of that, but then we're not able to give money over here, weighing all the needs. ACS also got a larger um, cost of living increase than any other of these agencies because those were done pro rata, and they get the largest grant outside of Avenidas and PAC, who are no longer in the program. So given that they were getting, I think it was over $2,000 as a cost of living increase, uh, they were already ahead of many of the other agencies right there. And so we had to kind of think about that, too, um, in terms of the best way to try to do the most good with the relatively small amount of money that we had. So our hope is we'll fund one position and then maybe they'll be able to find either through fundraising or, you know, reassignment re of internal resources the way to fund the other position. Um, the thing with HisRap is we usually can't fund the whole thing. We need to kind of give our agencies a hand, but they have to kind of come up sometimes, you know, with either additional funding or alternative funding of their own, too. Because the intention of HisRap is never to make agencies fully dependent on the city. That's just not the role that the city wants to play. So we think that this is a fair way to at least get one funded, and then hopefully they'll have the resources to figure out how to get the other one funded. So any other comments or questions from you guys, the fellow commissioners? Mehdi, did you have anything that you wanted to add or say? No, I, mean, I think just to echo the chair, um, one, you know, one thing that made this difficult was uh, you see uh, you know, rising needs in a lot of different areas, mm -hmm. se seniors, uh, low-income uh, individuals, uh, obviously uh, in the case of uh, ACS youth. Um, so you know, it's a little difficult to choose you know, wh um, which area we're going to help more, um, but we try to thread the needle sort of as best we can. Yeah. 
And I think too, as um, I'll just say, since our agencies are here, as the Human Relations Commission, one of our key tasks is to help ensure access to the community's resources at all kinds of levels, and that includes access to food and nutrition. That includes access to education. You know, that includes access to um, medicine. You know, it includes so many things. It's a really broad charter, so it's always a challenge for the HRC to figure out the best way to fulfill that charter. But um, you know, I. I think that what we've come up with will give all the agencies a lift and give everybody a chance to do a little more. And I think that's a good thing. But, you know, very, I'm very curious and eager to hear what some of the representatives of our agencies will have to say to us, um, because it's never ideal and, you know, it's just not a perfect world that we live in. Yes, Commissioner Stone? Yeah, when the agencies put in their request, did they already know about the um, about the cost of living increased, and was that already a part of their their budget, or you know, or they knew about the pro rata distribution. I don't know if they knew the amounts. That's okay. correct. That's correct. They 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 received communication from me that that went through, and it was a you know distribution of around thirty two thousand dollars from the council, but a, a worksheet um, with the actual amounts. Were, were not out that I mean they could have you know figured it out but it went out with the worksheet the same one that you're you received as well okay all right so if there are no other questions or comments anything anybody else wants to ask all right then let's go ahead and hear from our speakers are we at the right spot now Minka yes. okay don't want to make any more rule violations tonight <laughs> So then our first speaker would be, you said Philip? Yeah. All right, Philip Daw from Envision Shelter Network. So Philip, if you want, if you'd be more comfortable, you can just sit here with us and just speak into the mic there. Unless you feel like a pundit and you wanna. No, thank you very much for um, giving me time to speak for three minutes. Is that, oh, there's no time. Five minutes, Fine. okay, We're, we're generous here. Thank you very much. Um, every time that I've come to this commission, it's been, um, completely different when we're begging for money, asking, but tonight it's a little different. I want to thank every single one of you for all the work that you put in, especially the chair and also Minka for all the work that you did um, to secure this funding for us. Um, just like Jill mentioned, um, it's a lift. It doesn't solve the problem, but we really appreciate all the lifts that you have done. Um, and so thank you very much. And Envision the Shelter Network also during the process during the time that we were helping or asking for this money, we took some measures ourselves to make sure that the programs are sustainable because we know that the hunger issues are very vital to the community and uh, we could not discontinue all the breaking bread meals and the, all the food programs we had. So um, we, we cut two days off and we made sure that we were not gonna cut any more days. But what we did on our own, which is huge for us, is we partnered with, with um, Loaves and Fishes recently and so loaves and fishes will be providing the meals delivering them to palo alto to all the programs the days that we are serving meals mm -hmm. so that a lot of the burden of securing the food and all the expenses that comes with that will go away and they started on monday and um it's been very very successful we still maintain the same volunteers except that they don't have to show up three four hours earlier they have to show up an hour because the food that's delivered is hot warm and all they do is um serve the meals so that is an improvement that we have done on our part to make sure that um it, the program is sustainable and hopefully this money maybe next year will continue and even if it doesn't we know that we have made some improvements to the program <laughs> I also wanted to mention um, some successes that we've had at the Opportunity Center with the new program track that we introduced. A lot of our clients are going into permanent supportive housing. Um, a lot of people are motivated. They've joined the program track. Um, they have goals set, which they are really working very hard to achieve. And it gives us leverage because we know who is coming in and what their needs are. And so even though case managers are overwhelmed with the number of people that they have to see on a regular basis, we are plugging away and making sure that people are getting all the needs that they have. Just last month alone, one of my case managers, Octavio, put three people into permanent supportive housing, um, which is ahead of really um, with, with lack of housing in the area. He worked very hard to make sure three homeless people went into housing. Um, the other good news that I wanted to mention is that uh, we are working very hard to bring other services 
a satellite location to the Opportunity Center. And the two efforts that we have made um, with Joe's Comedian's office is bringing Social Security, um, have a satellite one day or maybe a two day um, working office at the Opportunity Center. Currently, we work very well with the Stanford Disability Law Clinic with Lisa Douglas, and they do tremendous work. Um, but they have to travel to Social Security office, make the phone calls, and do all that. And sometimes it's really very difficult because the clients um, do not show up. They are reluctant to meet them there. But this time, the office is going to be located at the Opportunity Center once a week or twice, and they will show up. to have their computers. Yesterday, the, um, the SSA department, the IT department, came to the Opportunity Center to inspect the location and see about um, computer and IT stuff to make sure that we are well prepared, which we are. And so they have recommended that we be a satellite office. And so that pilot is going to go into effect anytime soon. And another one that's also going into effect is um, working with Second Harvest Food Bank. They will also have a satellite day at the Opportunity Center where they will help people apply for um, food assistance programs so that um, another piece of that goes away. So um, I think those are all very tremendous um, um, steps that we have taken. And so I want to thank you for the support that you have given us over the last few months. It's, it, it shows the commitment that you have made towards um, um, human services in Palo Alto. Thank you. Oh, you thank, you. thank you, Philip, and thank you, Mila, for being here. Is there 30 seconds left? Yes, yes. Mila, you, we'll, we'll allow it, Minka, Mila, because we, um, we know you and love you so much. Uh, the person who manages contracts in me uh, just wants to point out that the SSA arrangement of the co-location co is proposed. It's not official. There's no ink signed yet, so I just want to put that out there. And that also, um, these are efforts that we've been exploring as a part of stabilizing the program long term, as Philip mentioned. So um, the funding that uh, we're hoping that the HRC takes the staff recommendation for would really help us in the interim because as you know our organization went through a merger two years ago and so we're two years into a merger mergers take three to four years to sort themselves out and so um, a boost like this would really help this program stabilize while we work on some of these really exciting long-term program changes so anyway sorry thank you thank, no, thank you. you Mila all right. So thank you, Philip and Mila, for being here and for sharing with us. It's really nice to get some good news. Um, so, Hyree, did you want to speak next? All right. So this is Hyree, whose last name no one can pronounce, from Shepser. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it that way. No, I'm kidding. From, um, from <laughs> Momentum that, Mental Health. Yes, hi. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm Swiss and I'm neutral. <laughs> okay. uh, and it's pronounced Schulfisser over in Zurich, Switzerland. But I want to thank. Um, all of you for um, the extra funding that, 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 we, that we got, you know, I always felt that, you know, what we do, I mean, I don't think we all get paid enough, but I, I just want to say that with all the nonprofits that are here today, um, I network with all of them. Matter of fact, on Tuesday night, I was at the Loma Verde Waverly Mill, and Paul, who's been there a long time, who kind of um, opens the kitchen up and has all the food there, he's now retiring this Friday. And I met Larry, the new guy there, and very nice guy, and they make people feel welcome there. And I go there to eat with the unhoused population in order to engage with them and build that trust and that rapport with them and offer them services. And I could, I could also refer them back to the Indigenous and back to um, other agencies that are involved. You know, my, my thing is to assess their needs and find out what, what agency would best um, meet those needs. And so, um, and I just want to thank you for the opportunity to, you know, to um, continue to do that. I appreciate it. And, um, Again, it's all about um, this community and about working together. And I think that all the agencies here, we all do that well. And it is a good community. And the food is so important. I mean, I'm, I'm not advocating for, you know, the Chuck Network, but the people that come to those meals, they really need that food, you know. Well, the majority of them do, you know. Um, and they talk about what's going on, and they open up, and they're able to um, get most of their needs met. Housing is the main part here. I feel that we need more landlords to be educated in um, allowing um, people to, to um, you know, access housing. They, they closed 160 SR, SRO units um, in Palo Alto. They, they, um, they closed uh, on the Craig 
the Apalto Hotel in Casa Oga. So there's less available affordable housing in Palo Alto. And a lot of people that are unhoused here in Palo Alto, this, they, they have gone to school here, this is their place, and so it's difficult for all of us to find them housing in other cities as well as here. So again, I want to thank you, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me anything you want. Thank you so thank much, Hyrie. Yeah, it was wonderful to see you here tonight. You too. All right. And I think I saw some late people leave. If you want to address the HRC, fill out one of these cards and get a card to staff. If anyone else came in late, fill out a card. Um, our next speaker will be Michelle Schroeder from Sala. I'm used to seeing Georgia, so you have to bear yes, with me. Georgia's on vacation. Okay. So I'm here tonight. Um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, as mentioned before, Sala provides free legal services to senior citizens in Palo Alto and throughout the county. We target clients who are low income or at risk of abuse or loss of independence. We provide our services through appointment days at the Avenida Senior Center and also at Stevenson House and by telephone for clients who are homebound or with emergencies. Um, we also actually do home visits if that's appropriate and necessary. Um, we continue to see many seniors who are in crisis, seniors with problems related to their public benefits that they rely on to meet their basic needs, uh, Social Security, SSI, Medicare, Medi-Cal, uh, seniors who are facing eviction or whose housing is in jeopardy in some manner, uh, including nursing home residents, <clears throat> uh, seniors that are victims of elder abuse, usually by someone who's living in their, ho in their homes with them, and seniors that need to do basic planning for incapacity and the end stages of life to enable them to age in place, remain independent, and avoid conservatorships. So we're not talking about really sophisticated estate planning, but just really basic documents that um, pretty much everybody uh, really should have. Uh, without SALA, most of our clients would not be able to navigate the legal system or the bureaucratic public benefit system. Um, they would not be able to represent themselves in court or in appeal hearings for their benefits. And they would not be able to prepare powers of attorney or, or other documents. Um, <clears throat> the demand for our services far exceeds what we're able to provide. Um, we're very grateful for the recommendation for the additional funding. This will allow us to expand our services by um, adding an additional appointment day at Avenidas every month. So currently we're going there twice a month and we'll be able to add another appointment day so we'll be able to see more clients. Uh, in addition though, it will also allow us to increase our capacity to provide more intensive levels of service for the very neediest clients. And I'll give you a quick example. Um, this is a, actually a very recent case, a Palo Alto resident. She was very low income elderly and disabled. She had had a traumatic brain injury some years before. Um, so she had all those things going on and her SSI benefits were cut off mostly because of a misunderstanding which I won't try to explain at this point. Uh, that was her only source of income so she couldn't pay her rent which means that she got an eviction notice so she was about to be evicted. Uh, a SALA attorney visited her at home I looked at her paperwork, contacted Social Security, sorted it out, and the matter was resolved basically within a few days. We got her benefits back, she was able to pay her rent, and so we prevented her from being homeless. And it was a fairly simple thing, but it um, made a big difference to her in her life. Um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Um, thank you again for your support of Sala. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I mean, I'm supposedly an intelligent person and with all my faculties, and I can't figure out any of the forms either. So it's just, <laughs> I can only imagine, you know, someone who's ill, elderly, and really in crisis needing that kind of service. And we're glad that we have you here in the community to provide it. Thank you so much. All right. And the next person on my list is Barbara Klausner from Dreamcatchers. Hello there. Good evening. Uh, it's nice to meet you all. I really wanted to come and introduce myself. I am the new executive director for Dreamcatchers, and I don't know if you're familiar with the organization at all from past years. It's been around for six years, but 
uh, I'm, I am now stepping in because the prior executive director is 23 years old, is going back to graduate school. <laughs> and uh, it, it's pretty indicative of the organization. It's a very, very young organization in that it is populated with very young people. It's basically Stanford full-time undergrads who are volunteers as tu after school tutors with low income uh, Palo Alto Unified School District middle school students. And I do, like, I do want to mention that um, most people think, immediately think they live uh, on the other side of the highway in East Palo Alto, but in fact, uh, I think over 75% of our students in our program are Palo Alto residents. So it really is a Palo Alto resident-based program. It came up when we recently got additional funding from the county, and that was a point we wanted to make because East Palo Alto is actually in San Mateo County. Um, so I did want the opportunity to meet you face to face and to let you know that uh, I am for now the new face of Dreamcatchers. Um, it's a really exciting time. We're a very lean organization. There has only been one full-time employee for the last six years of its existence. But we now hired a second um, person because we have to keep a 20-something year old in our midst. So uh, 20, I believe she's 23. Uh, Fairly Nickerson has come in as the academic program director for the first time a full-time paid employee and together we are coming up with all sorts of what we feel are exciting plans for uh, bringing the community into Dreamcatchers because it is 99% um, volunteer but it's been 99% volunteer students, Stanford students and what we really want to do to strengthen the program and to really strengthen the sense of community is to bring in the community to bring in some of the businesses, uh, local professionals, to bring in more students, high school students as well, you know, local Pali and Gun students. So we're very excited about it. We're really happy. Uh, I looked at the priorities that the subcommittee put out, and thank you very much. I know you've worked really hard on looking over the applications, and also I thank the commission for doing the same. Um, I can't argue with any of them, and again, I would echo what others have said at the table, which is most of them are part we partner with in some form or another as well. I mean, one of the other organizations that got a fair chunk of money, uh, that staff person is actually on our board. So, you know, she, she's probably happy, at, at least on one front. But um, even the amount that you did give us, which as a percentage of our grant is significant, it's a significant increase for us, um, makes a difference in that I've spent the last week writing a grant proposal from a local foundation, which I hope I'll get, and I was really happy to be able to say that in addition to district funding and county funding that act, the city had actually just specifically, hopefully, will grant us this um, additional set of funds specifically for this project because the grant that um, we're applying for is specifically for this project to bring in the community. Um, I also wanted to take the opportunity to let you know that um, of course, money is important, but the aspect of community involvement is really important to us as well. And um, I have to say, frankly, I don't know if you know, I have a background, a very strong tie to the school district. I was on the school board for five years uh, in Palo Alto and was a teacher. I kind of know that system really well. I don't really have great connections uh, in the city. And as I mentioned, in terms of the, the business community, uh, and as I mentioned, most of our organization is 20-year-old is uh, Stanford students. We really want to reach out and make connections with professionals in Palo Alto so that we can really bring the community into the program. I mean, it's a really important part. And I believe one of you is at Palantir. And I just want to mention that our um, last year's academic program director, which is a leadership position, is a summer intern at Palantir. We just met for lunch there. And we are hopefully going to pursue some kind of partnership with Palantir. And that's just an example of one of the many that we hope to do. But again, I just want to introduce myself and thank you for all of the work that you've done and we really appreciate your support. Thanks. Very welcome, Barbara, and thank you for being here. I know how busy you are. Mm -hmm. All right, so I only have one more card. Leave if you want to have, if you have a card, turn it in. Okay, our next speaker will be Sharon Hudson from Vista. Mary, did you need to see this card before you, before I take it from Leaf? Okay. I'm Sharon Hudson and Sorry, I'm not a public speaker by any means, but I did want to come and say we're very appreciative of you. Um, we're one of the, the new organizations that you um, started supporting uh, in 2014, and we really appreciate the extra funding. It's um, a real boost for us to be supported by our hometown here. Uh, we've been around for uh, 78 years, so uh, we work with 
all age groups for people who are losing or have already lost their vision to be able to maintain their independence. And it is, um, this program is actually for seniors that we applied for and over 80% of our clients are over 60. Actually about 70% of them are over the age of 80. So um, it's a real struggle when you're losing your vision. They're already struggling with aging related problems to stay in their home. So when they lose their vision, not being able to read, not being able to drive, not being able to do the simple things like pour a cup of coffee, cook a meal safely, it really makes a big difference um, when they can learn those tasks so that they can stay independent and be in their own home. And um, we, like everybody here, we're all connected as a community and we're sharing uh, resources with each other. So I just wanted to come and say I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the support. You're very welcome, Sharon. I'm so glad you could be here. It's Thank nice you. to see you again. All right, and then the last card that we have, so if anyone else wants to speak, make sure you fill out a card and hand it in, is from Lee Erickson from YCS. Not that you need any introduction. I do, I do. Um, so I'm here just to thank um, the, the committee for the recommendation to the HRC for consideration of an increase in, in the grant for youth community service. We work with uh, overall a total of uh, about 1,200 young people in the Mid Peninsula, engaging them in uh, middle school and high school students in service learning and leadership activities, both during the school year and in the summer. About half of those 1,200 are Palo Alto um, students, participants. Um, we are one of the one of the HISRAP grantees that has had a significant um, budget deficit for our programs, our Palo Alto programs. And so one of the things we've done about that is gone back to the Palo Alto District to negotiate um, a fee-based agreement to, to help to bring, the, bring down that, that deficit. Um, the other thing we've done is, is um, our, our Palo Alto Programs Director left the position. She was full-time. She left the position to move out of the state. And um, so we have done an analysis of that. That's an opportunity to deal with our deficit. And we divided uh, that full-time position into two part-time positions. And we applied for a um, grant increase to be applied to that, that new strategy. Um, and the recommendation is to support the um, um, a, a portion of the position that works with deepening our programs with students, with, with young people. And we've got very measurable outcomes of um, what we'll, we'll do with that, with that grant. And um, here to, to thank you for that. And um, with, with um, youth ages 11 to 14, we're going to be working with peer-led campaigns that address um, identity safety issues, like bullying and, and other issues of gender um, roles and, and so on, where, where at middle school age, whether at school or in the community, feel um, disrespected or, or lack of lack of confidence and with the high school students we're going to be working with peer leadership activities um, to address issues of um, decisions about health and behavior such as drug and alcohol use and we've got a um, very strong um, evidence-based program um, to utilize with that effort so we've got um, very specific goals we appreciate the, the support the increase um, to support our, our work with young people. The other portion that we will be um, looking to get funded in other ways um, is, is the other part-time position is focused on building um, allies and partnerships in the community. And so we'll be able to leverage um, the work that we do through that, through that work. So thank you. Oh, you're very thank welcome, you. Lee. I'm glad you made it tonight. Thank you. All right, so is there anyone else who would like to speak to us? If so, fill out a card, let us know. All right, if not. Okay, so do, are, do the commissioners have any comments or anything they want to say about our allocation recommendations or about any of the agencies that we heard from? No, I'd like to say I think the subcommittee seemed to do a great job. I think that's evident by the fact that we've had a majority of the, of the agencies appear to talk to us tonight. 
No one said anything negative about it. Everyone seems very happy about their increased funding, and it's so nice hearing everybody say thank you. <laughs> uh, so with that, I, um, I'm very supportive of this. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm very pleased for this two new agencies that we start supporting last year. One is Dreamcatcher, the other one is the Vista. Vista. And then they got additional funding to do whatever they have proposed to do. Just wonderful. Congratulations. And Commissioner Hosani, do you have anything else you want to add? Okay, we're good. All right, so if there are, does anyone have any recommended or suggested changes to what we had proposed, or do we have a motion to approve the recommendations as the subcommittee made them? Yeah, I'd love to make a motion to approve uh, the recommendations from the subcommittee. I right. second. Yeah, yeah, pro yeah, probably we shouldn't because we were on the subcommittee. <laughs> so, so all right, with that, well, all in favor of approving the um, funding recommendations as provided by the HISRAP subcommittee, say aye. 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 Abstain or oppose? We are good. And I will keep the commission and the applicants uh, apprised of the next step and in, in what form this will be going to the council. Traditionally, it's gone to finance and to council. I think that since his second year, and so I'm still working um, with leadership in the city for the exact process, but I will let everybody know exactly um, in what form and when this will go to the council. Great. We're trying to get this done as soon as possible to get it approved, to do um, changes to the current contract so we can get you reimbursed as soon as possible for these for these services. So that is the aim of Mary and myself. So, um, but just before everyone takes off, just to remind you, these are our recommendations, and council has been known to not like our recommendations, at least not 100%. So there could be changes. There are no promises or guarantees at this point, but I will certainly be there when council considers this to explain our rationale and answer any of their questions and advocate for all the agencies because we think you all do wonderful work. So that's where we are and stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. And Raul, before you go, has Kate had her baby yet? Not yet. Okay, okay. Sure. That was, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Kate Young from Palo Alto Housing is having her first baby any moment now. Yes. So we're all very excited. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you all so much. And uh, yeah, any questions or issues, feel free to contact the HRC or Minka and Mary. We'll be happy to answer your questions. All right. So now we do have a much less exciting and fulfilling <laughs> agenda item, but a requirement nevertheless. Good night, Barbara. I'm glad you made it. Um, we need to plan our annual retreat. So Commissioner Meddy has not been on one of these yet. Woohoo! It's, <laughs> yeah, it's quite thrilling. We do not leave the boundaries of California. <laughs> Yeah, no worries there. Um, so we often have our retreat in August. This year we had a meeting in August. So then our retreat would probably be in September timeframe. Every year it's quite an ordeal to find a date. I think it's always difficult. Um, so what we normally do is have staff come up with some dates. So some dates may be during the week, which can be problematic for those of us who work. Um, but it could be like a Friday afternoon and if your employer is okay with you taking off early, that kind of thing. Or we can do it on a weekend, which staff does not prefer, but sometimes it has to be on a weekend. So we usually mix up and, and give a range of dates. Um, and then once, once we have a date, we have to go ahead and plan what we're going to discuss. So I want to know from you, and I know you two have been at retreats in the past and Medi hasn't, but what kinds of things would, should we put on our retreat for this year? Because I'm thinking I would like to revisit the projects that we undertook last year. Some of them have brought, been brought to conclusion. Mm -hmm. For example, I think that Commissioner Chen and Commissioner Bichetti have written a report. They worked very hard. Yeah, they worked very hard on, on their report on affordable housing yes. and turned it in. Uh, the HISRAP subcommittee has been working very hard all year, and this is part of that effort that we went through tonight. We have a study session with the city council coming up in November that we need to prepare for. Um, so there's just a lot going on. And I just wanted to know from you if there were other things that you want to talk about uh, 
things that, for example, um, Commissioner Al Hassani, you had an interesting initiative about uh, maybe trying to solve the problem of homeless vets. So that might be an HRC project for the coming year that we would put on our agenda to discuss to see who might want to volunteer to to research that and figure out an action plan for that. And basically, I like that word, oper operationalize it uh, you know, and see I what we want to really do. I'm really interested in, 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 you know, getting something down on the immigration situation. On the immigration? Yeah, particularly recently with the children from South America. But remember that the things that we tackle should probably be local things. I know, but there are, there are local organizations local. involved. Okay. And, and there, um, I've been talking to uh, people from China, but they're they're not they're they're wealthy, so they bought houses around here. But they have problem, really got big problem of integrating into the culture, into the society, and then I don't know how we could help them out. Yeah, I think outreach to the Asian community has been really, really limited here in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. And I think even our city leaders are sometimes puzzled as to how to do it and you know, yeah. how, how, yeah, to, it's how to make sure the Asian community here is participating and feeling right. welcome. So that might be a really good topic for us, too. Yeah, it's. I heard my neighbor, I have a neighbor who is much, very much involved because she's a relative new immigrant. And she said there are at least 500 new immigrants this year from, from China. Wow. In Colorado, in the household. So I have to, um, I, I haven't met with, they seem to have sort of a very loose organization going on there. For, for what it's worth, uh, um, in my capacity on the comp plan leadership group, this is an issue we've been trying to engage uh, Asian Americans. Um, in the last city council meeting, I believe it was Councilman Burt, but don't quote me on that, specifically uh, asked city staff to um, do better outreach to the Asian American community. Right. Um, and want to see more participation from the community. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you quote a number that now Palo Alto is 20%. Uh, 27. 27%. percent Twenty-seven total, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the one thing I, I realized, I, they, they actually had a meeting at my house uh, a few weeks ago. Only uh, about nine people showed up. Um, I, I guess those people are interested in getting involved in the city uh, issues. So I encourage them to come to the council meeting. They actually, they can. It was uh, August 4th, Monday night. They discuss mm -hmm. about the future plans. Mm -hmm. I saw a few of them. I, I was there for, for about an hour. I saw them. So they, they would start to, you know, to involve in the community planning and other things. And they, I asked them to put down specific what area they're interested. I had this piece of paper, so mm -hmm. I could start, you know, ask them. I forgot to ask them to come up this meeting. But they did go to the council meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, that over the last few months, we've heard that um, Asian seniors are particularly isolated because they often lack oh, yeah. language fluency. Oh, And yes. there's a need for, you know, Mandarin-speaking caseworkers and social workers and outreach volunteers because, you know, we need to be able to communicate with people in their own language for right. the community. So there's right. a lot of issues. So that might be a really good time. I could volunteer with some of them, but I cannot do everything. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, one of the problems, to be bilingual and fluent in English is very difficult. I saw a lot of Asian, you know, recent new immigrants. They, they're terrific. Chinese, very good. If they didn't go to school here, their English is horrible. Because there's a big difference between Chinese and English. You, you know, grammar-wise, using the words, everything's different. For me, it took me like 40 years to catch up. So, so that, that means we, you know, it, it does very hard to get people, you know, doing that kind of work. Mm -hmm. But uh, another thing is the cultural background and the social background. I have a Pilates student in my, you know, she comes to my class Monday night, and she had tremendous problem with her in-law, her only her mother-in-law. She wanted to stay with with the children, even though she got accepted to the was that senior housing in Palo Alto, and they actually moved her stuff there. No way she would come home. So it was just horrible. So I don't know how to 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 do that kind of job. You know, it's very difficult. You need she a. She needs salad. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She's uh, kind of emotional. Cannot detach from her child's family. Hmm. Yeah. Well, these are all really, really good issues um, that we may. I think we may want to discuss in more detail at the um, at the retreat. Yeah, and another one to add as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'd be good to 
especially right now with the current media situation to to open up looking back into mental health depression how we can uh, open up that discussion as a community and make people more comfortable with it and see how we can help support project safety net for our for our youth well-being as well as as supporting other agencies to just help with mental health with be it the unhoused or any part of our population uh, and so I think that could be a, a good area to mm -hmm. look into I think you're right um, so one thing that um, I believe has held us back a bit in past years is that we often have these great ideas that we brainstorm but we don't operationalize them and you know people don't know what kind of tasks and activities to conduct to make that great idea you know something viable in the community and this year at our retreat what I'd like some help with is coming up with some plans and activities for example a civility roundtable like Mountain Views HRC does where they take an important topic like immigration or mental health and invite community leaders and invite the community and the HRC hosts it and sponsors it and helps advertise it and something you know or there might be a great film you know on human rights or human relationships that we want to sponsor and invite the community and so forth and I think we need to do more of that we need to not just have great ideas but we need to come up with some specific ways to make those ideas real and that's probably going to mean some extra legwork and some extra commitment on the part of the commissioners. So this year when you sign up, you know, it's going to be your name next to, you know, put on a film this winter or host a discussion this fall or, you know, and then we're going to follow up with you to, to see, you know, what things are happening. So just to recap, we did have some assignments from last year that some are fulfilled and some are not. So we are going to review those. Then we're going to brainstorm new ideas, which we've already started doing, and come up with, as I said, these specific activities and tasks. And then we're going to put names to those and figure out a loose time frame. You know, I'm not going to tie anybody down for nine months in advance, but sometime in the spring or sometime next summer, that kind of thing, this is going to be on you to get this thing done. And, and so just be aware that that's, I think that's the way that we need to go to really bring the HRC more into the community as a real resource. And I think to get, get a little bit more visibility around what we do. Um, then we also need to plan for our study session with the City Council. Um, I had some ideas for that which have been kind of derailed with this whole additional HISRAP funding thing and now I'm not sure how to go at you know that discussion so we might need to do some brainstorming amongst the HRC to see what we want to approach them with and what kind of accomplishments and goals that we want to present in November. Um, so I think first order of business, we've got to get a date. And then we have to get everybody on their toes to report in from what they did last year. And then we've got to figure out next year and the city council discussion. Minka looks very No, pensive. No, I don't. That's my normal look. I have to, <laughs> I have to work on that. Um, Mike, um, the only question I had, if, if other members, other commissioners that were there in the past would find it helpful to have it facilitated or not we've done it both ways in the past and I a lot of it I know depends on the skill of the facilitator um, it leaves you know the rest of the Commission and staff there to participate but um, if there's any thoughts on that well I've found our facilitators mostly helpful in the past but I think this year I'd like us to have a different type of discussion because I think we do want to have a more specific discussion around activities okay and I think we can do that on our own because um, it's going to be kind of we're going into sort of new waters here as a commission and I think we're going to try some new things okay so I think we can do that on our Unless own. we can get James Franco to facilitate uh -huh. then I'm um, his mom then I'm might his mom might be I don't know if he would oh uh, well, hey one Franco's good enough yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that's what's coming up. So when you get the doodle from city staff, which will probably be later this month sometime, whenever poor Mary gets out from under, because we've really burdened her this month with a lot of his rep stuff, be sure you fill out the doodle and be pr as prompt as you can so that we can come up with some dates. <laughs> we've had some real trouble getting dates in the past, and I'm really hopeful that we can get in September. And I would encourage um, commissioners to 
hit yes to every date you can do not just oh, I'd rather do that one so I'm just going to hit the Thursday but not the but unless there's a work or social commitment that that just is not a person a possibility if you could um, mark that you are able to attend yeah. because I mean obviously no one likes to give up their Saturday morning no. but you know it's once a year so we're gonna have to man up and just do that you know we because we don't want to meet in you know November and then meet with City Council the next week that's awkward yeah. for all of us. We want to have plenty of time to get our. Oh, but Sunday afternoon be good. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Commissioner <laughs> Chen. Um, so, okay, so I think that's pretty much of a plan for moving forward on the retreat. And so, Medi, if you have any questions about what we do, it's usually a half day, a morning or an afternoon. Uh, I was just going to ask. So, what's the process for uh, putting together the, the agenda? We and tossed around some ideas, um, but what's the process for? Play out the agenda before the retreat. Well, usually um, Ray and I will meet with city staff to do that just as we plan these meetings and set the agenda. But if anyone has something they definitely want on the retreat agenda, let me or Ray know. Oh. And we won't but if it's within the, the general topics of what's already been mentioned today, if you say, oh, I want that, that priority to work on, then that could be reserved for um, that discussion but if there isn't if there's something that wasn't mentioned as part of the framework of revisiting old priorities looking at new ones then let um, staff or commission leadership know and yeah and just so you know um, Commissioner McKetty myself Mary and Minka will be meeting on August 25th correct to plan the retreat agenda so if anybody has any feedback or input get to get to us before then and we will take that on board when we do our planning. Okay, so let's move on to, um, so, so Mary, we don't actually have a regular meeting on the 11th, right? So we can strike that. So we'll have our, our retreat will be sometime. Oh, so we're not gonna have a regular September meeting? I think we're doing the retreat in lieu of that. Oh, Aren't I we didn't. Did, I thought we decided on that. I don't recall that. I know that. Um, do we have something lined up? Consuelo wanted to come to bring the annual CDBG report. I'm not sure if that is a requirement by a certain date for HUD. Not that I'm itching for another meeting to go to, but let me check on that. Okay, because I was thinking we wouldn't, wouldn't. Oh, I, 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 I'm all for <laughs> one last night meeting, but let me just check on that. Check, so, check so, so the will is not to have that meeting and have the retreat instead. Yeah, because retreat's a big chunk of time. And sure. I don't okay. Have to put people through more. I'm unless we have totally some really pressing it. business to do. Okay, we'll be in touch with Consuelo. Okay, great. All right. And then actually, um, before we adjourn, I just wanted to give a quick commissioner report, but I didn't know if anyone else also had a commissioner report, in that I was invited to attend some amazing films that were developed through a program which was run by Palo Alto Housing Corp for low income youth. And they're called Digital Leaders, and they work at the Palo Alto Media Center. And every year, they work all summer for six weeks, and then they show their films to friends and family at, in August. So these films were really amazing. Um, and there was one in particular that was so moving that I actually would like to have the young woman and her brother who made the film. I think they are 14 and 15 or wow. 14 and 16. They are immigrants from Nigeria who did a film about class differences in Palo Alto. Oh, my. And it was Very phenomenal. Good. And I would love to have her come and show her film here to the HRC and have you all have a chance to see it and ask her and her brother questions about their experience uh, living here in Palo Alto. So uh, when these opportunities come up to visit some of our HISRAP agencies, do site visits or attend their events, I hope you'll take some advantage if you have the time because that was just a really great experience to see what the kids in one of the programs that we fund was actually able to do with a six week internship that they had at the media center and they learned to be filmmakers which is so cool so does anyone else have has anyone else done any th visits or anything that they want to talk about or share with I, the HRC? I just have to, uh, to let you know that we have I have about nine Chinese uh, immigrants at my house and then talk about involvement in this community in the city and they're residents Maybe. here in Palo Alto? They are residents they've been here I think it's like my neighbor been here close to 20 years Wow. But the others were more recent. They are well educated, you know, entrepreneur. You no, know. but they 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 know so little about how the city operates, and, and I encourage them to to get involved. And so I'll continue to do so. I have their email and their interest. So 
and some of them are interested in school board, some of them are interested in, in planning commissions, stuff like that. No one interested in human relations, but anyway, they don't know what we're doing. So it takes time for them to, but at least they start to be aware. Mm -hmm. They need to involve in the community to make the community grow. So that's important. So in the future, I would have set up more meeting well, with uh, Claudia for them mm -hmm. to meet Claudia and then talk about it more concrete things what we can do. That would be excellent. Yeah, I think that's such an overlooked demographic, and with the quarter of the city being Asian American, it's just not good to have so many people be out of the loop on. Yeah. City yeah, but in, 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 in China, because politics get people involved in a lot of groups and stuff, so they, they try to avoid politics. Yeah. But this is not politics, this is community. So they, they don't have the concept yet. Yeah. No, it's, it's very, I think it's, I wouldn't say uniquely American, but it's very American to have a city like Palo Alto where people volunteer and speak up and state their opinions. Because I know in other parts of the world that's not how things work. So it might be kind of part of the immigrant experience is learning how to be a community member. Yeah. All right, so does anyone have anything else that they want to mention, comment, add? All right, in that case, we are adjourned. Good job, everybody. Yeah.